hi everyone now we'll discuss the questions from the second unit that is those are asked in the question bank of embedded system unit number two architecture of embedded system is asked for 30 marks in external exam we'll get the 30 marks on this unit we'll go with the first question compare microprocessor versus microcontroller 5 marks here we'll discuss the comparison between microprocessor and microcontroller. In microprocessor representing a CPU performing ALU operations according to a predefined set of instructions. For microcontroller highly integrated chip that contains CPU, RAM, on-chip ROM, timers, etc. Next difference, it is a dependent unit requires other chips like timers and memory chips, etc. But in microcontroller it is a self-contained unit. So it doesn't need any external memory chips because come up with the on chip itself. And third one does not contain built in IO ports. But in microcontroller, most of the processor contain multiple built-in I.O. ports. Fourth difference is limited power saving options. But in microcontroller, it includes lot of power saving features. And fifth one, mostly general purpose in design and operations. Microcontroller, most applications oriented or domain specific. Next question, compare RISC versus CISC. So ask for 5 marks. RISC means Radius Instruction Set Computer. CISC means Complex Instruction Set Computers. In RISC, uh, the first difference, it has a lesser number of instructions. CISC, it has a greater number of instructions or large number of instructions are available. In RISC, the instruction pipeline is used, but in CISC, there is no instruction pipelining. In uh, RISC, third difference is Orthogonal Instruction Set operates on any registers and any addressing modes. We can perform the operations on any registers, any addressing modes, but in CISC, there is no non-orthogonal instruction set. In RISC, you are going to perform the operations on registers only except load and store. In CISC, operations are performed on registers or memories. And RISC, you have the large number of registers are available. In CISC, you have the limited number of registers are available. And in RISC, programmers need to write more code to execute a task, but in CISC, due to the large number of instructions, programmer can achieve the same with a single instructions. For CISC, sorry, for RISC, you have the fixed length instructions. The instruction length will be same for all type of instructions. But for RISC, sorry, for CISC, it has variable length instructions. And for RISC, less silicon usage with hardware architectures. For CISC, it's a more silicon usage since additional decoder logic is used for complex instruction. It can be hardware or on-human architecture. Now we'll compare hardware and on-human architecture. It's going to ask for five marks. Now we'll go for hardware architecture. The first difference is separate buses for instruction and data. But on-human, there is a single side bus for instruction and data. Second difference, easier to pipeline. And for one human architecture, low performance compared to hardwood. For hardwood architecture, comparatively high cost, for one human architecture, it is cheaper. Hardwood architecture, no memory alignment problems, but in one human architecture, it allows self modifying cores. That is, modifies while execution. Next difference is, since data memory, program memory are stored physically in different locations, so no chances for corruption of the program memory. But in one one architecture, you are using the single state bus for the program and data memories. There is a uh, chances of corruption of the program memories. Next one, explain the core of embedded system in 10 marks. So you have to explain all four points which are listed below. They are going to ask for 10 marks. You have to explain all four. The core of the embedded system falls into any one of the following categories. You can take any embedded systems. It comes under any one core of the following categories. Either it is going to use J 
general purpose or domain specific processors or it is going to use only application specific ICs or sometimes it is going to use programmable logic devices or some DMA devices going to use a course. Sometimes they are going to ask separately these questions for 5 marks. Fifth one, define application specific integrated circuit ASIC or else you will get the same uh, concept in another type of question. You will get the another form of question on this concept. Explain the role of ASIC in embedded systems or both together we are going to ask define application specific integrated circuit and explain the role of ASIC in embedded system for FIMARS. So first we will study definition. ASIC a microchip designed to perform the unique applications. Mainly it is used to perform the unique. ASIC is a microchip designed to perform a specific and unique applications. Because of using the single chip for integrate the several functions thereby reduce the system development cost because you can integrate a different functions on a single chip it totally decreases the development cost. Next one most of the ASICs are preparatory uh, which having some trade names uh, products it is referred to as a application specific standard products that is ASSP and uh, no other vendor should not be produced the same ASICs that's why all are uh, copyrighted ASICs. As a single chip ASIC consumes very small area in the total systems thereby helps in the design of smaller system with high capabilities or functionalities and the developer of such chips may not be in interested in revealing the internal details of it because of that only related persons or related manufacturers only can produce the ASICs by knowing the design only to them. Next question sixth one write a note on programmable logic devices or same will get another form explain the role of PLD in embedded system for FIMARS. Logic devices can be that is programmable logic device uh, before that we'll see logic devices can be classified into two types one is fixed and another is programmable so in fixed uh, logic devices circuits are fixed one permanent for one function or set of functions we design you can't change inside the contents in a fixed program logical devices but if you consider PLD it offers uh, more customers for wide range of logic capacity features and speed because if you, you can change the contents of PLDs. Finite design is completed much faster than the fixed logic devices. During the design phase customers can change the circuitry as often as they want. PLDs are based on the rewritable memories. Once design is final customer can go into the many PLDs as they need. Then we see the advantages of PLD. It offers more customers um, because of more flexibility during the design cycles. Do not require any long lead time for production, but it allows the customers to order just number of parts they need and when they need, they can get it very easily. That's why this is having more number of customers. Can be reprogrammed, you can change the features and you can change the programming of the PLDs can add the new feature simply upload the new programming file to the PLDs via internet. Next seven question is write a short note on commercial of the self component or you can in short you can call as course and another type of question is going to ask on this concept explain the role of course in embedded systems FIMARS. Now we'll see what is meant by course. It provides easy integrations and interoperability with the existing system components. You can easily integrate with the other uh, components. That's why it is easy integration and may be developed around a general purpose domain specific processor, application specific processors. You can develop it if you're having any type of processor, course can be supports. For example, remote control by the toy car, control units having RF circuitry part, ADC, UV detectors. It is readily available in the markets and the cords are very cheap. Developer can cut down the development time because readily available cords are there. They can easily purchase and integrate in the main systems. 
since no operational and manufacturer standards end users should stick to the particular vendors for the particular course that's the problem with the course you can't get it course for all the vendors you have to stick to only particular vendors manufacturer of the course com uh, component may be withdraw the product at any time the vendors can any time stop to manufacture the course advantages of course are ready to use directly you can start use in your systems no need to test it and easy to integrate you can integrate with any other devices it will supports it will reduce the development time this and this advantages of course are no operational and vendor or manufacturer may discontinue the production of particular course product by doing this one you won't get the course if you want to replace the same course that's a problem with the course next will tabulate different types of memories used in embedded systems and explain their role for each so ask for 10 marks here you have to explain both types of memories ram as well as rom now we'll go with the rom that is we can see the diagram which are the different types of roms are available flash nvram programmable rom mask rom erasable program able read only me memories electrically erasable programmable read only memories first one otherwise they are going to ask only relate to the ram and rom explain ram and rom for five marks here again you have to explain both memories in details first one mask rom it is one time programmable you can't change it once you are write the programs onto the rom pre programmed by the user as per the uh, pre programmed by the manufacturers okay as per his requirement make use of the hardware technology for storing data that's why you can't change it it is less expensive and it is permanent in bit storage it is not possible to alter the bit information so next one prom programmable read only memory also called as one time programmable memories that is otp not pre programmed by the manufacturers okay end user can write the program in the otp but once program is written by the prom programmer selectively burns the fuses fuses which are burned represent zeros which are not burned is represents a one cannot be reprogrammed once you are programmed you can't change it not useful for the development next eprom which is electrical erase sorry erasable programmable read only memories which gives flexibility to reprogram the same chip because you can erase the contents that's why it is called as eprom it stores the information by changing the floating gate of fat and quartz crystal is used to erase the contents of the information or contents of your eprom it needs to be taken out and put in a ev eraser for 20 to 30 minutes which is time consuming it is another disadvantage of eprom it takes more time to erase the contents of eprom that's why it is called as tedious and time consuming information can be altered by using the electrical signals it can be reprogrammed in the circuits we can reprogram in the circuits we can erase it in few milliseconds capacity is limited and compared to standard rom next one explain the advantage of flash over the other program storage memory in the embedded system as for five marks you have to write the explanation regarding the flash memories by writing these points it's a latest and most popular and it combines the reprogrammability of if from and high capacity of standard rom it has the characteristics of both electrical erasable programmable read only memories and it has a capacity of high standard rom so it stores the information in the array of mosfets and here we can erase the contents of flash as sector wise or phase level instead of erasing the contents of entire flash memory you can uh, erase the required information as a sector level or phase levels now we will study the ram ram is a data memory so you can perform the read and write operations and it is volatile once the power is turned off content is destroyed and you can access the memory directly that's why it is three times faster than the rom and this is to solve the execution speed problem in the processor based systems next we will see the importance of sram and DRAM SRAM is static RAM DRAM is dynamic RAM in SRAM it stores the data in the form of voltage levels and it made by the flip flops it is so fast 
because of it takes only 10 nanoseconds to read the contents of SRAM okay and it is capacity is low it stores very less information with high cost it needs minimum six transistors to store a single bit memory cell it does not require refreshing now if you see the dynamic RAM it made of MOSFET and the capacitors it requires refreshing because of the capacitors but it has a high capacity you can store the information in a bulk and the less expensive but it is slow to access the information with the time of 60 nanoseconds another RAM is a new RAM that is non-volatile RAM uh, it's a RAM with a battery backup even power off also the contents of RAM will not be erased and it contains SRAM and minute batteries lifespan of new RAM is around 10 years next we'll see the question is 12a here we'll get two questions each ma each question carries five marks define sensor explain the rule of sensor in embedded systems with an example and also define actuator explain the role of embedded system with example 5 marks I explain both sometimes both are going to ask for a 10 marks sensors means that converts the energy from one form to another form in any measurement or control purpose sensors is are used as an input so it is used to take the input from the real environments it is a transducer that converts the energy from one form to another for any measurements or control purpose for example temperature sensors smart running shoes if you see the temperature sensor which is going to use it in different application like ACs to sense the outside temperature according to that one it is going to process and it gives the required coolness in the room same thing that is actuator which converts the signals to corresponding physical actions according to the processing is happened by the CPU of your embedded systems the actuator is going to perform the task it is act as output device actuator is a transducer that may be either mechanical or electrical which converts signals to corresponding physical actions for example light emptying diodes to know the status of particular application in form of on or off now next question is explain the different input and output subsystem of embedded system ask for 10 marks here you have to explain both input devices and output devices for 10 marks we'll start with LED now you can see the diagram of LED in here okay it is an output device to indicate the status in the two form on and off it has VN junction diodes and here anode connected to the positive terminal and cathode to the negative terminals a register in series is connected to limit the currents and used for low cost applications and for functioning the anode is connected to the positive end of power supply cathode is connected to the negative end of power supply the maximum current flowing through the LED is limited by using register which is connected in series between the power supply and LEDs next one seven segment LED display it is output device which is display the alphanumeric characters which having eight LEDs having A to G segments and in seven segment LED display you will get the two configurations common anode and common cathodes and another next one optocoupler optocoupler coupler is used in both input and output circuits it is mainly used to isolate two parts of or a circuit for suppressing the interference in the data communication or high voltage suppressions it combines LEDs and phototransistors in a single package stepper motor next device it is electromechanical device which generates discrete dis uh, displacement in response to the DC electrical signals and the mainly uh, stepper motor is used for robotic controls paper feed mechanism of a printer then how the stepper motor is classified depends on the phases it is classified unipolar and bipolar in unipolar two windings per page and direction of the rotation is controlled by changing the direction of the current either you can rotate stepper motor clockwise direction or anti-clockwise directions simply by changing the direction of current you can change the direction of the current flows in the stepper motors bipolar contains single winding per page that is reversing the motor rotation by changing the direction of the current flows 
which is going to reverse your direction of stepper motor here the different stepping modes first of full step both phases are get energy simultaneously out of four coils two coils we're going to get the simultaneous energy you can see the tables coil a coil b coil c coil d and two coils getting high and two coils getting low like this you can get total four steps you go for wave step uh, here only one phase going to get the energy at a time so out of four steps you can see the four coils one coil get the energy remaining three coils are low state half step it is a combination of full step as well as wave step which gives highest torque and stabilities here directly we are going to get eight steps here one coil and uh, four coils depends on the combination of steps the different coils going to get the different energy levels sometimes uh, only one coil going to get energy sometimes two coils are going to get the energies according to the steps next question write a short note on relay explain the role of in embedded system by relay five marks question relay is a electromechanical device contains a relay coil made up of insulated wire on a metal core and metal armature with one or more contacts and when air voltage is applied to the relay coil current flows and generate the magnetic field which attracts the armature core and moves the contact point mainly used in different configurations for uh, are single full single throw normally open single full single throw normally closed or single full double throw depends on requirement you can use a different types of relays next one piezo buzzer which is going to generate the audio indications in the embedded applications you can generate the tunes as per the different types of piezo buzzers there are two types self driving and external driving self driving it has a inbuilt free defined tunes those tunes are going to generate once it uh, generates a sound external driving means you can add different tones to give the output as those tunes it mainly contains piezoelectric diaphragm which produces sound in the response as response to the voltage next push button switch is going to use to control the on and off state it's used as a input device it's make push to make or push to break normally closed and normally open switches it is in the pushed state it breaks or makes a circuit connections depends on type of push button you are using used for generating the momentary pulse and it is used as a reset or start in embedded applications so push buttons you can use for to start some applications or start the operations and sometimes to re uh, reset the systems depending on the way in which push button interface to uh, to the controller it can generate either high or low pulse next keyboard keyboard is alternate for push button switch it is minimize the number of io pins instead of connecting n number of push button switches you can connect the matrix keyboard which reduces the number of interface connections here you are going to use a scan scanning techniques to detect the key press and to prevent the debounce issues a technique can be applied here you have the two techniques software techniques and hardware techniques software techniques very easy to implement and the keys read after the debounce delay okay like this you can avoid the debounce issues in the keyboard interfacing as a input devices next one ppi programmable peripheral interface if you are using a uh, different microprocessors and to connect the different devices to the microprocessor you are going to use the different peripheral interface devices out of that the famous ppi is a255 is a popular one it supports 24 io pins to connect different io devices using the different parallel ports and grouped into the 8 bit port a port b port c next one explain the communication interfaces with respect to the embedded systems here you have to explain all in onboard communications as well as external communication interfaces for 10 marks sometimes is going to ask only onboard communication interfaces for 10 marks and external board communication 10 marks sometimes both together they are going to ask 10 marks first you have to list out all 
communication interfaces for external board and on boards if they ask this question or separately ask then you have to list out separately explain the different on board communications communication interfaces in a brief ask for 10 marks here we'll start with the one by one first one i to c bus it is known as inter integrated circuit bus it is a synchronous bidirectional hub duplex two wire serial interface so it is synchronous so it is going to send the clock signals for communication and hub duplex in the sense use uh, at a time you can't transmit and receive operations and while transmitting you can you can't receive and while receiving you can't transmit that's why it is called as half duplex it has two bus lines serial clock and serial data known as SCL and SDA respectively and we can connect n number of S2 devices to the uh, main master I2 devices and here it is going to work on the principle of master and slave system I2 bus three different data rates 100 kbps 400 kbps and 3.4 mbps i2c bus inter integrated circuit bus you can see in the diagram how it is going to connect it to the different slave devices using master microcontroller act as a master for to generate the clocks as well as to transmit the data serially across the different slave devices which are connected through the different registers which is connected to the vcc here the devices connected to the by I2C can act as either a master of slaves. The master device is responsible for controlling the communication by initiating and terminating the data transfers. Devices acting as slaves wait for the commands from the master and respond to the commands. Slave will not generate any commands, so it is only going to respond to the commands. Next one. SPA serial peripheral interface bus which is known as synchronous bidirectional full duplex four wire serial interface bus it is a single master slave system same as i2c bus and but it requires four signal lines for communications master out slave in master in slave out serial clock slave select master device is responsible for generating the clock signals here master is going to select the required slave devices as per his requirement and here works on the principle of SIP registers master and slave devices contains special SIP registers for data to transmit or receive and size of the SIP register is a device dependent normally it is multiple of 8 and compared to I2C SPI is more suitable for transfer of data in streams main limitation is it does not support an acknowledgement mecha mechanism that means after transmission of data or after receiving the data you will not get any acknowledgement regarding the successful transmission or successful reception UART is another onboard communication universal asynchronous receiver transmitter which is asynchronous form of data transmission because it does not require any clock signals to synchronize the end of transmission for that it uh, depends on free defined agreement between the devices that known as hand second signals before transmission or, or before the reception for proper communication transmission line of the sending device should be connected to the receiving device it also provides hardware hand shaking signals supports for controlling the serial data flow nowadays most of the microprocessor are available with integrate URT functionality next one one wire interface it is also known as asynchronous half duplex communication protocol it makes use of only one single line called DQ for communication and follow the master slave communication models again here one is act as a master and remaining is act as a slaves it allows to be sent the allows power to be sent along the signals in one wire interface here the power and signals go uh, to both to be sent in the signal lines that's why it is use a one wire uh, it supports a single master and one or more slave devices every one wire device contains a globally unique 64 bit id stored within the <coughs> it for addressing purpose 
communication over the one wire bus is divided into time slots of 60 microseconds. Next, parallel interface very useful for to interface the memories to write and read the uh, data into the memory concept. For memory mapping, parallel interface is very important. Device which supports parallel bus can directly connect to the parallel interface. It is controlled by control signal interface between the device and host to perform the read and write operations and select. Always initiated by the host processor if device want to initiate the operation or initiate the communication. Then it should use the interrupts. Direction of the data can be controlled by the read or write operations. Here you are to use decoder circuit activates the chip select line to activate the device. Next one let's see uh, 16 question number 16 explain the different external communication interfaces ask for 10 marks here you have to list all the external communication interfaces and briefly you have to explain first we'll start with the RS-232 it is our you have RS-422 you have the RS-485 different types of external communication is used in RS-232 or RS-422 or RS-485 it's all are full duplex wired connections asynchronous serial communication interface it's mainly developed by electronics industries association during 1960 logic 0 is represented with the voltage between the plus 3 and plus 25 logic 1 is using voltage between the minus 3 and minus 25 there are different logics to uh, work with the different voltages okay logic 0 known as space and logic 1 uh, known as mark it supports the baud rates up to 20 kbps still popular in industrial applications and supports two different types of connectors db9 and db25 and supports only point to point communication here not suitable for multi-drop com uh, communications and it is more susceptible to noise and reduces the operating distance you can see in diagrams you have the db9 and db25 and here for rs232 interface we are going to use the data terminating equipment as well as data communication terminating equipment dt and dc and there will be a level translator ic that is like max 232 is used for converting the signal lines from URT to RS-232 signal lines for the communication. It's very important. There is translator IC is, is used for the communication. RS-232 supports two different types of connectors. One is DV9, the pin are, total pins are 9. For DV25, total pins are 25. This is shown below in the diagrams. Next one, ESB, that is Universal Serial Bus. It's fire high, high speed serial bus for data communications it follows the star topology with usb as a host at center and one or more usb peripherals you can connect it to center usb devices it transmits data in packet formats and noise immunity is improved and it has the ability to supply the power to the connecting devices it doesn't require any external power supply it is given by the central usb host only and there are mini and micro usb connectors are available for the small form factor devices like portable media players and supports four different types of data transfer here in usb it is going to transfer the data in different formats mainly it is four types first one control in control the software to query configure and issue the commands to the USB devices for bulk for sending the block of data to a devices for isochronous data for serial for real time data communications data is transmitted as a streams in real time it does not supports error checking and retransmissions suppose while transmitting the data if you get any errors it will not be supports for retransmission of the data for example audio devices and medical equipments next one inter transfer for transfer the small amount of data next one IEEE 1394 it's also known as fire wire it is wired as isochronous high speed serial communication bus which supports peer to peer means point to point communication and point to multi point communications in this communication it allows total 63 
three devices to be connected on the bus in a tree topology. It supports a cable length of 50 feet and data rates of 400 to 3200 MB megabits per second. And it supports three types of connectors. We'll get to the four pin, six pin and nine pin variations. Used for used of devices like digital cameras, camcorders for the data transfer and storage. Unlike USB does not require any host for communicating the between the devices. Directly we can connect the scanner with a printer in IEEE. It doesn't require any host like a USB. Data rate is must ha far higher than the USB. So it uh, supports higher data rates. So speed is more and hardware implementation is costlier than USB. Next one infrared IRDA. It is serial half duplex line of sight based wireless technology for the data. Next example is remote control of TVs. So it supports point to point and point to multi point communications. Here communication range is 10 centimeter to 1 meters and IR supports data rates ranging from 9600 bits per second to 16 megabits per second. And infrared light e emitting diode is IR source and photo diode act as a receivers and it has a two parts physical link part and protocol part and popular for file exchange and data transfer in low cost devices even now most of the mobile phones supports IRDA next one Bluetooth is a low cost low power short range wireless technology for data and voice using the Bluetooth you can transmit the data as well as voice and it supports a data rate of 1 Mbps and uh, that means 1 megabits per second range is approximately 30 feet like IRDA it has also two parts and each Bluetooth device has 48 bit unique identification numbers and it supports point to point and point to multi point communications so you can use Bluetooth for both type of communications the device can be act as master and slave so one device act as a master another device act as a slave so you can connect a number of slaves to the Bluetooth popular in mobile phones for Wi-Fi it's known as wireless fidelity is popular for wireless communications for the network communication <coughs> It supports IP protocols, internet protocols, and each device is addressed by IP addresses. An intermediate agent is called Wi-Fi router. So through the Wi-Fi router, you can connect n number of Wi-Fi devices. So it supports a data rate of 1 Mbps to 150 Mbps, and it offers a range of 100 to 300 feet. Next one, Zigbee. Zigbee is a low power low cost wireless network protocols it supports distance up to 100 meters and data rates of 250 kbps and three device categories it has mainly three devices category that is coordinator routers and end device coordinator act as a root of the network which is responsible of initiating the network <coughs> and can store the information about the network Router is used for passing the information from one device to another. End device is for data communications. Example, smoke detectors, heating control and lighting controls. Next one, GPRS is known as general packet radio service used in the networks for the mobile phones to transfer the data over the mobile communications. Data is going to send in the form of packets at receiving end reconstructed by using the combining the all packets. Here radio channel is shared between several users instead of the dedicating to the particular cell phone users mainly for mobile enabled embedded devices. Next question number 17 write a short note on digital signal processor DSP or explain the role of DSP in embedded systems like this will get the question on 5 marks for DSP concept. So DSP means digital signal processor is a special purpose which is available in 18 bit, 16 bit or 32 bit mainly used to perform the computation demands and power constraints of today's embedded audio, video and communication applications. And DSP is more 
टू और थ्री टाइम्स फास्टर दैन द जनरल पर्पज माइक्रो प्रोसेसर इन मेनली यूज फॉर द सिग्नल प्रोसेसिंग अप्लीकेशंस एंड दिस इज अ बिकॉज आर्किटेक्चर डिफरेंस इज देयर बिटवीन डी एस पी एंड जनरल पर्पज माइक्रो प्रोसेसर एंड डी एस पी इज इम्प्लीमेंट द अलगोरिजम्स इन हार्डवेयर हु स्पीड अप द एग्जीक्यूशन फेयर जनरल पर्पज प्रोसेसर इम्प्लीमेंट द अलगोरिजम इन सॉफ्टवेयर एंड स्पीड ऑफ एग्जीक्यूशन डिपेंड्स ऑन द प्रिमरी ऑन क्लॉक फॉर द प्रोसेसर सो डी एस पी इज गोइंग टू ऑलवेज गिव द अलगोरिजम्स इन हार्डवेयर बट इन जनरल पर्पज कंप्यूटर इज गोइंग टू गिव द अलगोरिजम इन टर्म्स ऑफ सॉफ्टवेयर बट इट हैज सम main key units if are working with the dsps it has a program memory it is used to store the program which is required by the dsp to process the data next data memory is working memory for to store the temporary data while processing the data and computational engine is going to perform the signal processing in accordance with the stored program instructions in the program memory and it gives the results and it is going to use arithmetic units to increase the execution speed and also includes multiple hardware shifters for shifting the operands and save the execution time and finally io unit it acts as an interface between outside world and dsp by using the io unit you can capture the signals to be processed and you can deliver the processed signals through the output units for example audio video signal processing telecommunication multimedia applications then what are the application what are the operations is going to happens in dsp is sop calculation that is sum of a product calculations convolutions fft fast fourier transformer dft discrete fourier transformer next we will see explain the role of reset circuit in embedded systems the reset circuit is a timing circuits mainly it is used to ensure that device is not operating at voltage level when device is not guaranteed to operate when power is on when our power is on in the system if our system is not able to operate at required level in that voltage level in that time reset circuit is going to send the reset signal start the execution from the reset vector from the address of 0x 0000 either it active reset signal or low reset pulse you are going to get two types of reset pulse you can see in the diagrams first one going to give the reset pulse with active high which is connected to the vcc in second circuit will get the active low signals which is connected to the ground there will be free wheeling diode is connected to avoid the short circuit or to avoid the flow of highest uh, more current into the capacitors and resistors so some microprocessor controllers contains built in reset circuitry that is i given the explanation here for the reset circuit explanation so most of the processor controllers contain built in reset circuitry and don't require any external uh, reset circuitry and figure else, uh, illustrates that resistor capacitor based passive reset circuits for active high and low configurations and reset pulse width can be adjusted by changing the resistance value r and capacitance value c so depends on the value of r and c you can change the pulse width of the reset circuits it is available in built also if or else you can connect externally also and processor operation is synchronized to the clock signals and reset pulse which is generated by reset circuits is wide enough to give the time for clock oscillator to st stabilize before the internal reset state starts next one explain the role of brownout protection circuits in embedded systems next type of protection circuit is brownout protection circuits here the circuits prevents the processor or controller from the unexpected program execution be aware when supply voltage falls below the specified voltage it is going to prevents always the processor if give the unexpected program execution be aware occurs whenever the supply voltage falls below the required voltage it may be leads to data corruption and it is very essential for the battery power devices and this holds the processor in reset state until it reaches above the threshold voltages and the uh, oscillator unit generates the clock signals for synchronizing the operations of the processors you can see in the diagrams there will be power off when it enters the danger zone if it is not going to 
operate at required voltage falls below uh, from the specified voltage to avoid the data corruption brownout protection circuits is going to give the output or it is going to give the clock signals to synchronize the operations of processors next one explain the role of real time clock in the embedded system you can see real time clock in the systems to keep the track of the time it holds the information of current time date month year and day of the week okay it is very necessary to maintain all this information that's why they are going to use a real time clock should function even in absence of power also it is going to work as for the battery backup available in the form of the ICs and essential for synchronize the operations of the OS kernels it can interrupt the OS by asserting the interrupt lines and the OS kernel identify the interrupt IRQ numbers the kernel can perform the necessary operations like system date time updations managing the software timers and the RTC chip is interface to the processors or controllers of the embedded system for operating system based embedded systems timing reference is essential to synchronize the operations of the OS kernels mainly real time clock is keep the track of all the operating system kernels it keep on synchronize the time of the OS next one explain the role of watchdog timer in embedded system ask for five marks what is the use of watchdog timer in embedded systems it is to monitor the firmware execution and reset the system processor when program execution hangs up you have to use alt control delete to whenever your system is hanged during the execution of the program in that case watchdog timer is going to generate the signals to restart the embedded systems it is a hardware timer it is going to use the increment counter or decrement counter to count the pulses to generate a reset signals most of processor implements the built-in watchdog timers or sometimes you can use the external ICs whenever watchdog timeout is occurs an interrupt is generated instead of the resetting the modern systems and interrupt handler handles the situation in appropriate fashions watchdog timer in embedded system is continued it is mainly monitor the former execution to reset your processor or microcontroller when the program execution hangs up and it generates an interrupt in case of execution time for task is exceeding the maximum allotted limit for counter they are going to set the timers so once timer is reset uh, whenever the program is hanged in the microcontroller within a set time it has to execute the program otherwise within a time if not execute the programs if it reaches maximum limit uh, next moment it is going to generate the interrupts to reset hold the system using the watchdog timer we can enable or disable watchdog functioning while executing the programs also and it is a register to write the count values with this your second unit all the questions are completed if you have any doubts you can ask me i am going to solve it and get back to you on that your doubts thanks for watching the videos